Greetings, goblins, and welcome to another episode of RCR CBC RPG. Today, we are continuing part two of our Shadow Dark read with titles. So, let's get started. Cue the music! Read, comment, review. Chapter by chapter with you. A new RPG we can all referee. On my PDF folders a crew. Titles. As you gain levels, your title changes to reflect an increase in your fame or infamy. Your legend begins to precede you as your renown grows for good or for ill. An improved title could present opportunities that you were previously out of your reach. Fighter titles. Lawful, Squire, Cavalier, Knight, Thane, Lord or Lady. Chaotic. Knave, Bandit, Slayer, Reaver, Warlord. Neutral. Warrior, Barbarian, Battle Rager, War Chief, Chieftain. Priest titles. Lawful. Acolyte, Crusader, Templar. Champion, Paladin. Chaotic. Initiate, Zealot, Cultist. Scourge, Chaos Knight. Neutral. Seeker, Invoker, Harris Specs, Mystic, Oracle. Thief titles. Lawful. Footpad, Burglar, Rook, Underboss, Boss. Chaotic. Thug, Cutthroat, Shadow, Assassin, Wraith. Neutral. Robber, Outlaw, Rogue, Renegade, Bandit, King, or Queen. Wizard titles. Apprentice, Conjurer, Arcanist, Mage, Archmage. What about High Mage? Chaotic. Adept, Channeler, Witch, Warlock, Diabolist, Sorcerer. Neutral. Shaman, Seer, Warden, Sage, Druid. Languages. Common, Dwarvish, Elvish, Giant, Goblin, Marin, Orcish, Reptilian, Sylvan, Thanian. Rare languages. Celestial, Diabolic, Draconic, Primordial. Starting gear in AC. Starting gear. Zero level characters start with 1d4 of the following items. Wait, see, so you might only have one item? Ooh. D12. Torch, dagger, pole, short bow, and five arrows. Only five arrows? Rope, 60 foot, oil flask, crowbar, iron spikes, 10, flint and steel, grappling hook, club, caltrops, one bag. First level characters start with 2d6 times 5 gold pieces to buy gear. See gear, page 34. Armor class. Your armor class AC is 10, plus your dexterity modifier. Wearing armor changes your AC. You can wear the types of armor listed for your class. Zero level PCs can wear all armor until first level. Oof. Here we have a list of gear. I'm probably not going to go through everything, but I'll hit the highlights. Arrows. Backpack. Holds all the gear you can carry. Don't lose it. Caltrops. Coins. These are gold pieces worth 10 pieces of silver or 100 copper pieces. Crossbow bolts. Crowbar. Grants advantage on checks to pry open stuck objects. Flask and bottle. Flint and steel. A small fire starter with a routine attempt to light a fire always succeeding. Gem. Grappling hook. A rope anchor with three curved tines. Tins? Tines? Iron spikes. Lantern. Mirror. Oil flask. Pole. Wooden. Ten foot long. Rations. One day of food and water supply for one person. Okay, so ration is food and water. Rope. Torch. Sheds light to a near distance. Burns for one hour of real time. There it is. Basic gear. We have everything we just listed. The quantity per gear slot. So... This is a cool thing where your gear slots determined by your strength, it looks like, and how many of those specific items can fit into one gear slot. So for arrows, it's 1 to 20. Interesting, backpack is first one is free to carry. That makes sense. I like that coins are first 100 are free. Gear slots. You can carry a number of items equal to your strength stat or 10, whichever is higher. Unless noted, all gear besides typical clothing fills one gear slot. Gear that is hard to transport might fill more than one slot. Crawling Kit A crawling kit costs 7 GP, it uses 7 gear slots, and contains the following items. Backpack, flint and steel, torch, rations, iron spikes, grappling hook, rope, 60 feet. Armor, we have leather armor at 10 gold pieces, that is 11 plus your dex mod. Chainmail, 13 plus dex mod, disadvantage on stealth and swim. Plate mail, 15, no swim, disadvantage on stealth. Shield, occupies one hand. Mithril, metal armor only, no penalty to stealth or swim. Weapons, we have your general list of weapons here. I'll let you pause the video and read those. I'm not going to go through every one. I will go through the weapon properties, though. Finesse, you may use your strength or dex when attacking with this weapon. Loading, you must forego moving to reload this weapon. Thrown, you may throw this weapon to make a ranged attack 
with it using strength or dex. Two-handed, you must use this weapon with two hands. Versatile, you can use this weapon with one or two hands. Use the higher damage die if you're wielding it with two. Weapon types, melee weapons strike at arm's reach and ranged weapons strike at a distance. Range, you can use a weapon at close, near, or far range. Here we have a list of character names. I'm only gonna go through the goblin ones because they're the only ones that matter. We have Iggs, Tark, Nyx, Link, Roke, Fitz, Tila, Riggs, Prim, Zeb, Finn, Borg, Yark, Deeg, Nibs, Brack, Fink, Rizzo, Squib, and Grix. Those are some great goblin names. Uh, level Advancement. Experience Points. XP represents your learning, influence, and increasing skill. XP awards are based on the quality of the treasure and boons you gain during a session. GMs should see awarding XP on page 117 for guidance. The GM can award XP right away or at the end of each session. I recommend right away, personally. Leveling up. To gain a level, you need to earn your current level times 10 in XP. I actually really like that. It's very succinct. Thumbs up. Once you reach a new level, your total XP resets back to zero. Interesting. Huh, okay. You get any new title, spells, and talent improvements listed for your level. Your maximum HP increases, and you might also gain a talent roll. Here we have an advancement chart showing your level, which ones give you talents, and how much XP. Talent roll. You gain one roll on your class's talent table when you reach the indicated levels. Duplicate talents stack unless noted. Increased HP. Roll your class's hit points die and add it to your maximum HP. Certain doom is a challenge, not a promise. Uraga, half-orc priest. Random characters. You can use these tables to randomly generate a zero-level or first-level character. Roll your stats, background, and class talents as normal. Make selections for your character if no table is provided. Here we have our ancestries. Human, elf, dwarf, halfling, half-orc, goblin, the way the gods intended. We have our classes, fighter, priest, thief, and wizard. We have our priest spells if you happen to be a priest, light, cure wounds, holy weapon, protection from evil, shield of faith, or reroll. We have your deity, Saint Teragnus, Gied, Madeira the Covenant, Ord, Memnon, Shun the Vile, Ramlot. We have your language, celestial, diabolic, draconic, or primordial. Sorry, that was rare languages. And here are your common, dwarvish, elvish, giant, goblin, Marin, orcish, reptilian, sylvan, Thanian or reroll. You have your alignment, lawful, neutral, chaotic. Your gear, random first level characters have a crawling kit, one weapon, leather armor if they can wear it, and five gold pieces. Random zero level characters have 1d4 of the following items. But then we have your wizard spells and your gear, which we already read the gear, but I'm going to read the wizard spells. Alarm, burning hands, charm person, detect magic, feather fall, floating disc, hold portal, light, mage armor, magic missile. Protection from evil, sleep. Here we have an awesome piece of art of an elder human high mage. Magic. What you call wizardry, I call faith. But in either case, it's our dedication that fuels it. Iraga, half-orc priest, to Krieg, human wizard. Casting spells. Spellcasters use the raw power of creation and destruction to bend reality, shaping it to the will of their gods or ambitions. Wizard magic is fickle, complicated, and volatile. Even the most learned mages tread carefully when reaching beyond the veil to grasp arcane energies. Priest magic is miraculous, sacred, and instinctive. Priests who offend their gods might lose the ability to cast spells until they can undertake penance. Spellcasting When you cast a spell, you invoke magic to cause an effect. Casting a spell takes your action. Characters with a spellcasting talent can cast spells. To cast a wizard spell, you know, make a spellcasting check by rolling 1d20 plus your intelligence modifier. To cast a priest spell, you know, make a spell casting check by rolling 1d20 plus your wisdom modifier. The DC to successfully cast a spell is 10 plus the spell's tier. Result: If you succeed on your spell casting check, the spell takes effect. If you fail your spell casting check, the spell does not take effect. You can't cast that spell again until you complete a rest. Very cut and dry, very clean. I like it for this style of a game. Critical success: If you roll a natural 20 on your spell casting check, you may double one of the spell's numerical effects. This remains in effect on a focus spell until your next focus check. Critical failure. If you roll a natural one on your spellcasting check, the spell does not take effect. 
If it was a focus spell, the spell immediately ends. Wizard spell. If the spell was a wizard spell, you can't cast that spell again until you successfully complete a rest. You must also roll on the wizard mishap table corresponding to the spell's tier. Priest spell. If the spell was a priest spell, your deity is greatly displeased and revokes its power. You can't cast that spell again until you complete ritualistic penance to your deity and successfully complete a rest. For a sort of old school, grimdark kind of game, I do like this idea that magic is sort of chaotic. It's not very reliant or reliable. I think that's a good feel for a sort of low magic, grimdark game. And here it's just built into the mechanics, so. Ba-ching! Penance. The GM determines the exact nature of the penance you must undertake based on your deity and alignment. Penance requires a holy quest, ritualistic atonement, or a material sacrifice that you donate or destroy. Inadequate or subversive penance, such as donating your sacrifice to a party member, only displeases your deity further and makes the spell loss permanent. Here we have the wizard mishap table, and I'm just going to read through these quickly. Devastation. Roll twice and combine both effects. Explosion. You take 1d8 damage. Refraction. You target yourself with the spell. Your hand slipped. You target a random ally with the spell. Mind doing. You can't cast the spell again for a week. Discorporation. One random piece of your gear disappears forever. Spell Worm. You lose the ability to cast a random spell on each of your turns until you pass a DC 12 constitution check. You regain the ability to cast those spells after completing a rest. Harmonic Failure. You lose the ability to cast a random spell until you complete a rest. Poof! You suppress all light within a near distance from you, including sunlight and magical light for 10 rounds. The horror! You scream uncontrollably for three rounds in Primordial, drawing lots of attention. Energy Surge. You glow bright purple for 10 rounds, granting enemies advantage on attacks against you. Unstable Conduit. You have disadvantage on casting spells of the same tier for 10 rounds. Oh, okay, that was just the tier 1 to 2 spells. This is 3 to 4. Devastation. Roll twice and combine both effects. Blast Radius. You and all creatures take 2d6 damage. Duplicate Refraction. You target yourself and the nearest ally with two identical copies of the spell. You flubbed the incantation. You cast a random spell from your known spells at the same target, even if it would not normally be possible. Ethereal Bandersnatch. Two random pieces of your gear disappear forever. Arcano Mutagenesis. You must pass a DC 12 constitution check or a random stat drops to 3 until you successfully complete a rest. Boom! You open a 30 foot deep sinkhole in the ground with you at the center. You and all near creatures must pass a DC 15 dexterity check or fall in. Petrification. 1d4 of your limbs petrify for the next 24 hours. Stupefication. You lose the ability to cast all spells of the same tier until you complete a rest. It cannot be unseen. You must pass a DC 12 wisdom check or descend into mad ravings for 1d4 hours. Sorry, rounds. Radioactive energies. You whirl with repulsive energies, drawing the hostility and attacks of all enemies who can see you for the next 1d4 rounds. Uncontained channeling. You have disadvantage on casting spells of the same tier and lower for 10 rounds. I get the feeling a lot of this is going to be more of the same with some slight changes, so I'm going to just let you guys click pause here if you want to read them. Some of them are more interesting than others, but a lot of these old school games have lots of tables, so I'm not going to read every single table. Scrolls and Wands. Using Scrolls and Wands. Scrolls and Wands contain magic spells. Spellcasters can use them to cast these spells if the spell is on their spell list, even if they don't know the spell. Spell, spell, spell. To do so, they must succeed on a spellcasting check with a DC of 10 plus the tier of the spell contained in the wand or scroll. Failing to cast a spell from a wand or scroll does not impact the ability to cast known spells. Scrolls. After a spellcasting attempt with a scroll, the magical writing disappears from the scroll and it ceases to work. On a critical failure, casters with mishap tables must roll a mishap. Wands. On a failed casting attempt, the wand stops working until you complete a rest. On a critical failure, the wand permanently breaks and casters with mishap tables must roll a mishap. Wand. Spell Attributes. Tiers. Spells are classified according to their tiers, which range from 1 to 5. Range. 
Range determines at what distance, close, near, or far, you can deliver the spell's effects. Self range means you can only target yourself with the spell. Oh man, I've been working on spell ranges and implements in my own game, and it's one of the things I'm most excited about in my system. But that is an aside that has nothing to do with Shadow Dark. Duration. Duration is how long the spell effect lasts. Spells can have an instant effect or last for several turns, rounds, or longer. See focus for spells with a focus duration. Overlapping effects. Ongoing effects of the, of the same spell on the same target do not combine. The spell with the most powerful effect takes precedence, such as the spell with the longer remaining duration. Focus. Some spells last for as long as you focus. You can't cast other focus spells while focusing. You can end a focus spell at any time. To maintain focus, make a spell casting check at the start of your turn as if you were casting that spell. Success. The spell remains in effect until the start of your next turn. Failure. The spell ends. If you were focusing, you do not lose the ability to cast that spell. However, if you critically fail on that check to maintain focus, treat it as a standard critical failure. If you take damage or become distracted while focusing, due to an earthquake for example, you must immediately make a spellcasting check to maintain focus. Seems like statistically there's a lot of risk with focus spells, but I guess they're more powerful because they can last longer, so it's a balance. Priest Spell List we have the tiers of the priest spell list. I will let you guys pause and read. Pausing for pause. Wizard spell list. Again, you guys can pause and read. There's probably a second page to this one. I knew it. I'll scroll down for that last spell. Ah, I wish. I may end the video here because I want to ask some questions before I cut this one short. Is anyone interested in me reading every spell description? If so, I will make that video. I'm happy to. If not, I will skip to more section that's just about the rules and the basics of the game, and I won't read as many tables and things like that. But let me know in the comments, I have no idea. Some people might just want to listen to me babble on about acid arrows and alter selves and animating dead. Because I mean, just to get an idea of what you would be getting yourself into if I read every single one of these, here's the A's, B's, C's, D's, no E's, F. G, H, I, K, L, and so on and so forth. Like I said, if someone would find that video interesting to watch, I'll do one where I just read the spell descriptions. It might be a short video, but that's fine. But I'm going to end it here for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. Like I said in my other video, I'm going to do more different kinds of TTRPGs in the future. I've been focusing on some of the more recent ones that have come out, like Shadow Dark or Rules Light ones. I've done a lot of the Kickstarters for things like Nave 2 and Dolmen Wood, so you'll probably see those in the future. But I just wanted to say that I don't exclusively do Rules Light. I'm probably going to, as I mentioned before, I'm probably going to do Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay soon, so look out for that one. It's one I'm very excited about. So remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. We'll see you in the next video. Read, comment, review. Chapter by chapter with you. A new RPG we can all referee. All my PDF folders accrue.